guys! Welcome or welcome back to Ace. I'm Allie, and today I'm joined by Kitty, Charlie, and Lisette. Hello! I am Kitty, your neighborhood-friendly space ace, the arrow ace, everybody's favorite goth aunt. Um, hi, I'm Charlie. I, she, her, lesbian, and I, I have a speech impediment. This is gonna suck. All right. You're all right. <laughs> we don't judge. So yeah. Great. And I am Lisette. I am heterosexual, she, her, and I am just really excited to be here. Why? I'm excited for this episode. I think this is, I'm probably the most excited for this episode out of all the episodes that we've done thus far, because we're asking questions, and I like asking questions. <laughs> so Charlie and Lisette, you guys are aloe, mm -hmm. and so me and Kitty are going to alternate asking you questions. All right. Question one, what does being turned on feel like and how easy is it to get turned on? Ooh. That is a good question. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I mean, it's going to depend obviously on like your biology and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like dudes get turned on really easily apparently. And like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a weird sensation. Like it's, I guess the only way I can kind of describe it is like, I know maybe this is just like, maybe this is bad, but like, like kind of like, you know how you see like something that's really cute. You're kind of like, you get like the urge to like, oh, I want to go over there and like, I want to, yes. I want to give it a hug. I want to squeeze it. Oh, it looks so cute. Like, yes. it's kind of like just like an urge that comes from somewhere inside of you. You don't know why, but you're programmed a certain way. Like you see someone, you're like, oh, I want them to do X, Y, Z, or I want to do X, Y, Z to them. I think it's something kind of like that in the sense that it just happens, like, you know, you see someone or something happens and like it elicits like a reaction from you, if that makes sense. Kind of an instinctual programmed in thing of, yeah, ooh, like, I like that, I want it. <laughs> yeah, yes. kind of. Okay. It, it does, it, yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense, but also like it's just something inside of you is like telling you that thing. And it's like mm -hmm. deep down. It's not like surface level either. It's like you don't really understand it almost. You're just like, I, I like that. And I want yeah. more of that. And I mean, even, oh, wow. yeah, sometimes some people like are even like off put by their attraction to an extent too. So. Mm. Oh, really? I have, I have definitely heard that from friends of mine, yeah. like uh, specifically Courtney, my friend Courtney, bless her heart. She was for a time in a very, very abusive relationship. Like he was abusive in every way it's possible to abuse someone emotionally, physically, sexually. He... She actually has PTSD from it. And after she got out of that relationship, she had never really been in any sort of sexual relationship before that. Mm -hmm. oh, but wow, because of what went oh. on with him, she it kind of awakened those feelings for her. So now she does actually want to have sexual romantic relationships with people, but she's also terrified of it because yeah. she, she doesn't know how to deal with it. And she's like, I, what? I don't know if this is because of what I went through or if it's a genuine desire of mine or, uh. Yeah. And I, I imagine like something like that might make you not confused about your sexuality per se, but like, you know what I mean? Like at least question things. Yeah. Yeah, that's difficult. And of course she has, she has significant, pro like if she instigates it, she's fine. But when other people instigate it, she tends to like freeze and lock up and get yeah. very freaked out. Mm. So it's, mm, it's, it's not the greatest situation ever. But yeah, I've, I've definitely heard of people being off put or freaked out by being sexually attracted to someone, whether it's because they're like uh, another individual I knew, he identified as a gay man and he was friends with my mom for a while when I was growing up. And eventually he came to her and was like, I just, I, I adore you. You're a great friend, but I cannot hang out with you anymore because you are confusing the crap out of me because I like oh. men, but I'm attracted to you and it's weirding me out. Yeah. I mean, and which maybe, my mom was very yeah. cool with. She completely understood. She's like, I understand that. I wish you all the best. You go do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. So this isn't actually asked, but I'm thinking about it now. Are mm -hmm. there particular things that will turn you on? Like very specific things. Yeah, definitely. Like, <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I think they're all unique to every person as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> like if, especially if like a top or bottom. Yeah. Yes. That is a good example. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. <laughs> I guess without getting too personal, somebody might enjoy like neck kisses and getting bit on the neck, but another person might not find that a turn on. While it's yeah, personally... So. The erogenous zones on the human body seem to be very, very specific to certain people. I know that there uh, are some people who it's just like skin contact, just like a brush on the arm is enough to like, that turns them on. Oh like it's just... Rev the engine. <laughs> that would... <sighs> 
<laughs> Wait, I... It's say, say, probably inconvenient, yeah. 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 Oh my goodness. Uh, I had a significant live... problem with a guy I went to high school with. Um, well, mm -hmm. they were in high school, first of all. <laughs> he can't control himself. I've told you about the Canadian a time or two, Lizette. Uh. Um, he is an ex of mine. Like, well after high school, we did try a relationship once he was not so much of a jerk, or at least didn't present himself as much as of a jerk. He was still a gigantic jerk, but that's neither here nor there. But when we were in high he school, he, he liked to call me his shiny object, which, excuse uh, you, but oh, his favorite, uh, his, yeah, he called me his bright, shiny object, even though he had a girlfriend who was one of my friends. Uh, the Canadian ooh. is a whole ball of wax we can get into later. <laughs> no, he, that is an episode but, all of its own. Yes, it is. <laughs> but that his, is objectifying to the max. <laughs> Uh -huh. It is. Yikes. Well, uh, yeah, but his favorite pastime was to come up behind me, like during lunch break and whatnot, and grab my butt or my hips. Mm -mm. He got hit <sighs> with my lunchbox a lot because even though I now know that I'm an aromantic asexual, my hip bones are a hot spot. You grab them, it does things. So he got hit a lot because here I'm trying to do my goddamn Latin homework before next period and he's <laughs> grabbing me and it's like excuse you first off personal space you jerk second off stop touching that <laughs> you wouldn't is... like it if I did that to oh, you and then God. walked away and did nothing about it I mean maybe he would that might be the problem <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it might have been yeah he's got a lot of problems though <laughs> it's just a trying to give you a side <laughs> right <laughs> Okay, question number two. What's the deal with being obsessed with boys? I will never understand. I don't think I can answer this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I can answer this. <laughs> Alright. She Go says it in a shameful voice. Anyway, so I I for I can't explain it. It's the thing that happens and you just you see one boy and then you're like, Oh, he's cute and you see another one, and you're like, Oh, he's even cuter, and then he has a friend, and then he has a friend, and the next thing you know you like twelve people and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> so it's kind of um, like walking through like a oh. like an orchard or something and being like, Oh, that's a pretty apple. Oh damn, that's exactly. a pretty apple and pretty soon exactly. you're walking out you know with what? a bushel. <laughs> You can you can apply that like to the lesbian experience though that happens very very easily and very often. <laughs> and well, yeah, there's lots of pretty girls in the world. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. I I can sort of understand this from like an artistic point of view because as an artist I'm I'm very even though I don't necessarily feel sexual attraction I'm very capable of looking at people and being you know oh they're very attractive male or female and you know things about them that are striking or beautiful or whatever so i can definitely understand where as someone who does feel sexual attraction it would be very easy with all the good looking people in the world to see attractive entities and be like oh damn that's nice yeah <laughs> it's kind of like collecting yeah. that's a bad way to put it but you see like <laughs> that's a bad way to put it <laughs> You're just like, being boy crazy is hard because now I can't explain it. <laughs> Probably asked by every ace, but is sex just overhyped or is it actually quote unquote worth it? It depends who it's with. Yeah, it, yeah, it depends on who it's with <laughs> and also like your experience. Cause like some people, some things just don't work on them. Or like if you have like a specific kind of like pain, you know, with your reproductive system or something like that, it might not be worth it yes. for that person. It, it's, I think that's kind of an individual thing. I, yeah. I assume the average person would probably say it's worth it or like it's, it's you know, hyped appropriately. But I, oh, I think that's oh. a little bit hard to gauge in terms of uh -huh. overall. It does get a little bit overhyped, I will admit. Um, oh. It's put on a pedestal. Like it, it's the most important thing that will ever happen to you in your life and it's it's not and it doesn't define having sex mm -hmm. doesn't define you like as a person at all whatsoever and it's very much well everybody remembers being in high school and the race to the virginity car like everybody wanted yeah. to lose their virginity and it was just everybody it didn't matter everybody was non-stop i'm going to lose my virginity at some point everybody went through that before well, i everybody. go to college or whatever yeah, yeah. before i go I'm to college still in high school <laughs> And, oh my god yeah please no no yeah no like i think i think part of it's the overhyping of sex is because of the i guess mythos around virginity as a whole yeah for some reason it's put on this pedestal yeah 
you know. like it's an adult thing and we all want to grow up really fast and stuff yeah, yeah. it is i can see that being part of it well that and of course especially in the media they learned pretty quickly that sex sells so i don't think that has helped fuel right the fascination of especially young people with mm -hmm. sex 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 <laughs> yeah that's a good way to put it. All right, question number four. What would you consider to be the reason for there being such an emphasis on sex in media? I mean, I think you kind of answered it. It's because usually sex sells. Yeah, sex sells. Yeah. And it's proven time and time again. I think part of the reason sex sells so well is because, let's be fair, A-spec people are kind of still a minority. Oh, yeah. So the vast majority of people do have sexual urges, sexual drives, right. and seeing that kind of thing in media, whether it's a gay relationship, a lesbian relationship, bisexual, you know, whatever orientation, it's the same thing as like when you're an Asian American or an African American seeing a character in a show or a movie that you can look at and go, oh, I'm that same color, I'm like them. I think oh, it's just it's kind like, of that same thing. Uh... It's they, you, you see like an interracial couple or a lesbian couple or whatever it is in a show or a film that you like and you re they relate to it and they're like yes that yeah. kind of like we are with you know when we see a spec yeah, people in the a media yeah. it's like heck yes i think that's part of it i think also it's the idea of association like you know if you're a person and you like women and there's an ad then they have a bunch of attractive women you know you're going to subconsciously right. associate the two things yeah that's what i've heard like body spray perfume fragrance commercials where it's yeah exactly and so like why not pick the most primal of all of the i guess like yeah urges that a pers person person might have right? that, but that also confuses me because perfume is marketed towards women <laughs> and the ads are with attractive women and lesbians are minorities so I how does that all... work I well, I th don't. I th a lot of times I... things are marketed to men so that they can buy them for their 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 wives and, and girlfriends and stuff for <laughs> some reason. That which... too, and of course you have a lot of like very thin, very attractive models parading around and like getting all this attention in a dude's Thanks. mind. Yeah. That equals oh, if I give this to my wife or my girlfriend or whoever, it'll make her feel pretty and attractive and yeah. all this stuff. Another reason they would use women to per to market women's perfume and men to market men's cologne is you want to be that mm -hmm. stunningly attractive person on the in the ad campaign and on the uh, box you want sense. you want yeah. to be that sexy you want to she's wearing this perfume she has like she's so gorgeous you know you want to be her so if i mm -hmm. wear this perfume i will be her yeah i can be i'm one yeah. i'm closer to being her yeah exactly yeah. especially if you're really far mm -hmm. from looking like the person yeah right yeah like if you're like an average weight person and the person's you know super skinny and you can't achieve that goal because you know most people can't something like that yeah, like in your mind it's like oh it's i'm almost there i'm getting closer it's really messed up to be honest and i hate it but it's, like, yeah. yeah i hate it too it's it's that like constant reaching for striving for perfection or reaching for the unattainable and yeah the media preys on all of us with that a lot kitty ask the next question uh this one coming from reddit does sexual attraction feel different towards a stranger compared to a partner mm, yes i want to say yes yeah i would say like the like the sense itself doesn't but like in my head the subconsciously it feels shallow it feels almost wrong yeah it feels it feels weird because like i also don't want to be sexualizing someone right yeah, yeah. so like I don't know, like it, it, the urge and that stuff itself is exactly the same, but in your head, it's, it's a different, it's a different game. All right, so the attraction is the same, but you interpret it in a different sense. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Ah, okay, that's interesting. I would imagine to a certain extent, one has like an air of like mystery and maybe danger and the unknown, kind of mm -hmm. like a thrill junkie thing, like mm -hmm. ooh. <laughs> It might be well, the best thing ever and whatever. Whereas with a partner, it probably more, it's comfortable, it's familiar, you know what to expect. So it's maybe more meaningful. Yeah, I guess it just depends on like who you are as a person and what you need. Like if, if you are the type of person who likes adventure and mystery, then maybe, you know, it's not as much of an issue for you. But if you are more of a, I guess, quote unquote, quote, quote, quote unquote, committed person, right? Then, maybe, yeah. you know, then it's more of an issue. I guess. Mm -hmm. How much does sexual attraction affect your attention and train of thought? How distracting is it? 
It depends what I'm doing, but it yeah. can be quite distracting. I will yeah, be honest. It can be. Although I have ADHD, so I really I don't <laughs> count as the normal here. Oh so. yeah. Well, I just don't have the H. I just have ADD and squirrel brain. Man, I keep staying yeah, focused on anything like, is hard. People say I have ADD. They just oh look a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> So like it definitely takes up a lot of your mental space, but I don't I can't speak for the average person who doesn't have ADHD. So a question that wasn't asked, but now I'm thinking of currently. How many times a day would you say that you think about like sex or sexual attraction? Well, this question, this answer, I mean, is definitely going to be different for everyone because yeah, yeah, it's definitely. kind of personal. But I will be honest, at a, probably at least twice a day, once in the morning and once at night. Like that's just. I don't know why. It's just yeah. how it is. And that might be a you know association with the bed though, like you know. That probably. <laughs> that probably. Probably. She you... likes her bed. She's like me. It, it yeah. seems to be a familial trait of sleep is lovely, and it's our favorite hobby. So. <laughs> yeah. Sleep I is think lovely though. For me, it doesn't usually like it doesn't happen out of the blue. Like it, it usually is something like I see something or someone mentions something that kind of triggers me to think of something and then you know that spirals from there but like at least yeah. for me it doesn't just generally happen and usually I, something mm -hmm. causes it i see do you notice a difference between sexual attraction and arousal or do they always line up yeah i feel like they are con usually connected although occasionally like i think like like we mentioned earlier like being turned on but like not liking the fact that you're turned on right or yeah. having mixed emotions mm -hmm. i think usually you, you usually the two are connected that's, that's what I would say. And then yeah. if you also have, I would think anyway, like if you're on the internet and you're like watching pornography or something, you don't necessarily have a sexual attraction to what you're watching or the people that are involved, especially if you're watching something like uh, hentai, which is animated. You're not necessarily sexually attracted to the cartoon characters in the anime, but it's more like the sound effects and the I'm gonna ruin your of day. The act would. <laughs> I'm about to ruin your um, day, sis. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I doubt you're um, gonna ruin my day. They are attracted to the the cartoon character. Oh yeah, it is I know very there, much. I know like... there are some people who very much are attracted. <laughs> I was like, to no, girls. no, wait, don't. I've been on the internet for a long time. I'm very aware. <laughs> Keeping in mind that I've been, it's in some aspect or another part of the furry community since I was 14. So I'm Ooh. very aware that there are people who are attracted to cartoon characters. <laughs> Some of them are yeah. attracted to cartoon animals. I mean, oh, it's God. just a whole, <laughs> that's a whole thing unto itself. I mean, yeah, and I mean, on that like slight uh, digression, like, I mean, some people like would watch something like that to live kind of vicariously through it. Yes. As opposed oh. to, you know, just watching it and sitting there just like, wow, entertaining. Like, I don't know. It's Whereas, I, yeah, I, I do occasionally watch hentai mainly because I find it absolutely hysterical. Like, <laughs> some of the things that go on I in those is <laughs> hilarious. There's plots and okay. storylines. Next question. What was your reaction when learning when first learning about asexuality. Oh, I know Lissette's answer to this. It made me <laughs> laugh so much. I loved it. My first reaction, honestly, I sat for like an hour to half an hour telling her how much easier her life is and how great it is <laughs> and how I'm kind of jealous. She told <laughs> like there's no you, drama. You 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 told me like when you first heard it you had no idea what it meant and then you like went and did research and your like first thought was oh my god these people are the master race yeah i was like this isn't fair I asexual reproduction let's sign go. up for this right yeah i at least for myself like i was raised in like a super strict like christian um household oh and lord so yeah, you so for me, I think it's funny because asexuality, when I learned about like sexualities and stuff, asexuality was the only one I didn't have a problem with because like in my head yeah. it was just like, oh, well, that's one less sin for them. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, everything else was like introduced to me as this negative thing and for a long time I associated yeah. with it. And like, but asexuality, I guess, is like less known. So it, I don't know, like my mind was first like, oh, they could become like a, not a, not a, not a pastor, but you know, like. A, a nun? preacher or a nun. Yeah, a nun or, or something they like that. Serve like, oh. the church without any any issue. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, like, my first reaction was just like, oh, good, good for them. <laughs>
<laughs> That's fair. That is fair. Especially in a super religious setting, I can completely understand why your brain was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that actually kind of makes sense. Yeah. I've been itching to know whether sexual attraction not only ties to the connection of a relationship, but also the self-esteem of those involved. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um... I would imagine that it would. Because, like, especially if you're in a relationship and your partner, you know, and you've been you know sexually intimate throughout that relationship and all of a sudden they don't want to be physically intimate with you i can imagine that would be a terrible knock to the self-esteem like whoa oh, what the hell it's a horrible knock to the self-esteem yeah and also like if you don't have like i guess the most confidence you might not express any like desires you have especially in a sexual nature yeah mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and i mean i don't know it's I don't really know how to answer that, to be completely honest. I imagine for some people, it's probably fine, and they're just like, oh, well, sucks to be you, you don't know what you're missing, but I would imagine for the vast majority of people that, like, someone rejecting you in that way would be kind of like, well, what's oh, wrong with me? Yeah, that oh, would definitely hurt the self-esteem. Yeah. Am I not attractive? Am I not good enough? Exactly. You know? Right, right. Oh, yeah. Things, yeah. But, there's a lot of things, though, that, that tie into that. So. Yeah, that can easily That's spiral, true. sadly. Yeah. Mm. Is asexuality a turnoff on dating profiles? I'm gonna be honest, I have never come across it on a dating profile. But I don't think it would be a turnoff. It would definitely be, I would have questions, why are you on the dating profile? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not, well, like, I mean, not that you don't need to make friends and like, well, yeah, that is true. Yeah, like... I mean, in the situation that I was single, I think it wouldn't be a turnoff, but it would make me think, I guess, like, you know, like uh, how much would this challenge. affect my life, how, uh, you know, things like that. But it wouldn't be, no, it wouldn't be a turnoff per se. Mm -hmm. I imagine You're there are some You're liable to make a who... friend out of me, honestly, because I would... Yeah. Yeah. Very, mm -hmm. I'm like, hello, you're not going to want <laughs> that from me. Let's be best friends. Come over and watch a movie <laughs> with me. Because you wouldn't have that issue with, like, <laughs> that weird tension and attraction. Yeah, it kind of works out. I don't think it would be a bad thing at all, actually. Yeah. How do you know you're sexually attracted to a person? Oh, I get butterflies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get like feelings in your stomach. I don't know, like it's. It's like hard. butterflies. It's almost like being nervous, but amplified by 10, and you can't move and you kind of shake a little bit. And heaven forbid yeah, that person talk to you. Yeah, you're nervous specifically because of a person, but not in a bad way. No, and it's like it's you intense. want to be nervous. Yeah. <sighs> You also oh my like, gosh. yeah, like you want to be near the person. It's like it's, it's a very, it's weird to explain. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm currently I'm going through the beginning part of a relationship, so it's yes. all very new and it's all very like I. Well, Kitty knows I'm very, <laughs> I like him a lot. She's very into him and he's very into her, but they've both had like rough past relationships. So right now they're both mm. kind of like, nope, we're gonna ignore this. But it's definitely like. I get butterflies anytime I'm around him and he hugs me and I just, I melt. Like literally you get weak need and you kind of just want, like, it's like, I want to get in a ball and die, but I don't want to die. Please I'm just don't happy. ever let me just, go. <laughs> you do not yeah, ever yeah, let it, me go. And again, that's going to like depend for like, you know, like, I guess like, like a top or bottom or things like that. Right. Yes. And like, however you express your affection, but yeah. No. I, Besides it, it, the top and bottom thing, that sounded a lot like romantic attraction, honestly. Oh, they, 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 they tend to be, from what I understand right. anyway, they tend to be very kind of intertwined for allosexual people. Well, mm -hmm. I guess it depends on how much of a romantic person you are. Like, oh, I would, true. I would personally say both are, are like, I guess, important in the allosexual kind of relationship, right? Mm -hmm. In that kind of category, I'd say they're both important and they're kind of opposite end of the, you know, like, the scale we gotta have, like, a good balance at least. But, like, if someone's more of a romantic type, then, you know, I guess, I don't know, like, they are related for sure for, I think, most people. Yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> this stuff is, <laughs> it's like explaining colors. It is. <laughs> right, yeah, right, it is. Yeah, it's it is. very much like trying to explain colors to the blind. If I could plug Color my brain blind. in to you and let you experience what I experience, I would 100%. So you knew yeah. what I was talking about. <laughs> well, I don't know that I'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the thought, but I don't know that we'd enjoy that like at all. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? It'd be like the guys that get the period simulators. 
Oh, oh or the no. uh, or the or the uh, the the contractions, the contraction mm. simulations. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That's no fun. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> The, the contraction simulation is they basically take they take these pads and they put them on the places mm -hmm. on a man where a woman generally feels the pain from contractions and it's like an oh. electro shock thing. It's like a shock. And they oh, put like gosh. a controlled shock through it and it causes all the muscles to spasm like they would during a contraction. <laughs> yeah, it does not take very long at all for men generally for men to tap out of that and be like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Big old They're bag of nope. Ready. That is 200 pounds of nope in a five pound bag. No thank you. They're never ready. It's always funny. <laughs> it is always uh, funny. It's it's always Pity. great. Next question. Yep. Is it really that difficult for some aloe people not to have sex? What happens if you don't? I, again, I think that just depends on like your personal sex drive. I, I don't know. It I, does. It does definitely depend on your personal sex drive. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, there are people who get, like, addicted. Yes. You know? Oh, that's So, thing. like, I mean, you know, so that happens. But I think for the average person, it's not that hard. I, I don't know. I think it depends on, like, whether or not you're single or in a relationship or, you know, like, I guess it depends on your situation. But I don't think it's that hard for most people. I don't know. That's an individual so what thing. happens if you don't? Well, it's not, you don't die or anything. You just... <laughs> 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 Obviously, otherwise there would be no asexuals. <laughs> I do know that some people with very high sex drives, they get like really, really cranky and irritable and they yeah. just like, nah. Yeah, and it, and <laughs> really? it might like, oh it might, if you don't, if you go oh, yeah. a while without something, like it might increase your sex drive a yes. little bit, but you're not going to like explode or like go into some rage, like at least from what I know, like I don't think something crazy. Like some happen. people would. You know what? Some Probably some dudes, actually. yeah. Yeah. There are, I think there are people though that that's where the hookup culture where they just go out and like they just hook up with the first person yeah. they see just because right. they have to yeah. is where that mm -hmm. comes in. Probably. Right. How would you react if your partner told you that they were asexual? I would kind of not believe them to be honest because I have a <laughs> lot of evidence in the contrary. <laughs> But, it would definitely have to be a conversation. Like you couldn't yeah. just walk past me and be like, "Oh, by the way, I'm asexual," and just keep moving. Like, come yeah, back here. Like, like, whoa, wait a minute, what? What happened last night? Then what was the, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I think you like if they were like if I guess like if I knew that they were being genuine, like I wouldn't have an issue with that. Like I still you know like I love my partner with all my heart, so I don't you know it wouldn't be really a big issue for me. You know, mm -hmm. um, especially because but... I'm I guess I'm a bit more of a romantic person myself, so. Mm -hmm. I think like it, I would I wouldn't believe them, but if I was you know if I was if I eventually believed them, I wouldn't have an issue with it per se. I guess I definitely wouldn't have an issue with it at all because you have to be who you are. But I would definitely be like, have I been pushing you to do things that you didn't want to do? Like oh yeah, like that oh. would be a total. Have I been making you uncomfortable? I'm so sorry. Oh, it would yeah, definitely be a major definitely, conversation. I would imagine it would be a whole conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, no, no. Like, no, I still yeah. love you. I do. I love you so much. But, like, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Like, it would definitely... I don't think I would leave that person. Definitely yeah. not. Oh. I think it also depends on how long you've known them. Like, mm -hmm. if you've been dating for, like, eight years and finally they tell you, it's like, maybe you could have told me sooner. Because I don't, I don't yeah. know, like, if after a certain point, like, it's... Like, it gets to feel, it probably gets to feel a little bit like, wow, you kind of lied to me for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, but also, like, I care about you, I want you to be happy, so why would you spend eight years, you know, forcing yourself to pretend that you're, you know, yeah. not nice when you are, something like that? So I think it's... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of conflicting emotions, but generally it would positive, be... I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I, I imagine there are definitely some people who would have a big issue with it. Oh, there yeah. are people who would freak out. Oh, yeah, there definitely out. are people who would freak out and be like, well, that's it for this then, bye, because yeah. yeah. I'm not going to be in a relationship with somebody that be physical with me. And then yeah. there are people yeah. who, you know, and then, of course, there are other people who would be like, okay, and they make sex toys for a reason. <laughs> well, there are people who get into relationships because they're sex driven and yeah, because exactly. it's constant. And those relationships never work out either. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, in, unless they're like both you? in it for it. I don't know. Yeah. Kind of like what's that? Is it a relationship sex? or just a long hookup? That's a very good question. That's I what don't it know. Turns I'm not into. that kind of person. <laughs> I. Mm. 
Yeah. I've been in a relationship like that, and it was horrible, and it Ooh. turns into one giant hookup, one night stand that never oh, freaking ends. Oh. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I'm pretty sure that's not what you were signing up for. Not what I signed up for. When you got with him. No. He signed up for a long hookup. You thought you were getting into a relationship, and that's part of why it's no longer going on. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Fair, that's a very different... Yeah situate that's a very different story yeah Ooh. you have the same mindset yeah that's wow kitty next question how common is it to watch porn really do most aloe people watch it from my experience most do yeah yeah most unless they oh, have wow. some sort of like objection maybe religious possibly but i mean that doesn't i mean or they're really like rude it but doesn't most... tend to stop most people but i know some who it does I know um, most people me. that I know have watched porn at least once. Yeah, oh, at sure. least. I think Even if it was people, just out like, of morbid curiosity to yeah, what yeah, is the yeah. hype. Like, make a distinction between I'm curious or it's something that I enjoy doing. Yeah, I, I know a couple people who don't out of like a a moral kind of thing like not 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 mm. religious uh, but they specifically they dislike yeah. some of the shit that goes on in the uh can i say yeah that? i yeah yeah you're no, good okay <laughs> shit in, 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 in the in the um like the porn industry because that yeah uh, there's a lot of like I, you know trafficking and other things yeah. so yeah there's a lot of bad that goes on in the adult film industry for sure yeah, like i so. personally <laughs> like i said i occasionally watch it because i think it's funny um but I don't Most like to watch. Ever. I don't like to. It really is. I don't like to watch like live action pornography because, be it first off, it's very objectifying, and yeah. the the image that it paints of what sex is like is so far from reality. No, and it's what they paint I've, women in the I've, bedroom like. Oh. Yeah, we're all like really loud, really vocal. We are complete freaks. We do all kinds of freaky stuff. We and all it's just, spit on ourselves. We always, all do that. <laughs> it paints just a very unrealistic, kind of unhealthy expectation for what a sexual relationship will even be like. There's unfortunately, there's a lot of guys who, you know, they consume a lot of pornography. So they try oh, to wow. replicate that. The Canadian yeah. used to do this. I never thought about that. The fact that yeah, the, the consumption. Canadian, oh God, he was terrible Ooh. for it. So yeah. like. I mean, like even like, especially eesh. if you don't have good sex education. Yeah. If you're not yeah. careful, porn could become your sex education. And oh, then it is for a lot you, of people, yeah, especially exactly. here in the States. Yeah. And there oh, are yeah, so many different know. kinds. It's not just like you're going to watch somebody do missionary and that's every video. There's things that you oh, no, should be some, exposed to. Stuff. No, I mean, like, and even, like, I know most, like, lesbians, they tend not to watch the stuff that is in like the lesbian, lesbian category. Like, lesbian porn? Well, yeah, because, that is so objectifying. Oh, yeah, you can tell it's dudes behind the camera. Like, it's so, yeah. it's lesbian so bad. Lesbian porn <laughs> is so geared for straight guys. It's oh, yeah. unreal. That confuses the heck out of me. Well, no, well, well <laughs> dudes love to... Harass yeah, they love to fantasize oh, okay. about girls getting with girls for some reason. They think it's really, really hot. Usually they want to do like a three or like a four way where they have yes. multiple yeah. girls and one guy. That's usually their goal eventually. Yeah. But yeah. I it's kind of like I'm not sure why, when, or how it cropped up where especially like teenage girls, like when I was 14, 15, 16, 17, there was a huge rash of teenage girls who practically fetishized gay relationships like two yes. men together i know what you're talking why about Gallery, no. why gallery was the thing which was entirely for artists that did solely like male oriented art like you mm -hmm. couldn't post art of female characters there hardly at all if you did it had to be like like a one to ten ratio it was <sighs> It would. It's. I don't know if it's gotten better over time, well, and that's no, kind of quieted no. down, or if it's um, still if it's still a big issue, and I'm just no longer in the circles where it's really, really prevalent to like all of these little fandoms that we that. have running around the internet. I was in the One Direction mm -hmm. fandom, and I'll speak on this very candidly. Oh, no. They oh, shipped God, yeah. mm -hmm. Louis and Harry, and it got disgusting. I actually do, yeah. still on my Twitter, Larry Stileson, I think that's what it was called, is blocked mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. disgusting. Because it was over fetishizing a relationship that wasn't even a thing, first of all. Yeah, I... 
I can't stand Shipping it. Shipping culture is kind of And bad. that's just one example. Lisette and I both watch uh, Markiplier on YouTube. I also watch oh. Jacksepticeye. Oh, they're they're, both, yeah, that's a ship. They I know are that. Good. They're good friends in real life. They both have girlfriends. They're both in committed, long-term, heterosexual relationships. They're not doing it on the side. Yeah. And yet, there is a thriving, really freaky fan base of people who write fan fiction, draw very mm -hmm. graphic artwork of them oh, hooking God. up, or Mark hooking up with Ethan. It's... Yeah. I, it gets I, creepy. It's madness. And I'm like, see, with like a fictional character, like if you want to take like Alucard and Alexander Anderson from Helsing and write a silly fanfic about them hooking up instead of trying to kill one another, whatever. They're fictional characters. <laughs> They're not right. real people. Fictional characters are okay. Yeah. But with, with real people, there's... They read ah, that. They yeah, yeah, see yeah. that. Well, yeah. It affects their relationship. Like Mark and Jack make just... An insane amount of. Uh, I remember back when Mark used to do videos with Yami Mash. They had like running that jokes about how the mm -hmm. Marky Mash ship. It drives yeah. me crazy though because it's like you're basically just invalidating this person's reality because it's not what you want. It's ugh, it creeps me out. It really creeps me out. It creeps me out too. Okay, next question. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we got off on a tangent. Yeah, it's fine. Dana's gonna have a hard time cutting a lot of this, I think. <laughs> How often do you meet someone you feel sexually attracted to? For me, like, I don't know, it used to happen a lot more, but since I got into a relationship, I, like, everyone else kind of pales in comparison. So, like, it doesn't uh -huh. happen nearly as often for me. Like, it has to be, I guess, like, like, rare exceptions. Like, for me, it doesn't happen as often. Right. Um, I would have to say it doesn't happen as often as it used to. I think it comes with maturity and being, like, getting older. I think. Oh. Yeah, that too, probably. You start to kind of settle on finding one person. Yeah, probably also figuring out your, like, your types and stuff, too. Yes. Yeah. And accepting your types. That yeah, too, that yeah. makes a lot of sense, because I can imagine when you're, like, a teenager and you don't really know what it is you're looking for, what you want, and you've got all these hormones racing around and making you not the smartest person on the planet, <laughs> that you... It's kind of like somebody turned you loose in an exotic fruit section of the store, and it's like, well, I'll get one of these, and one of these, and one of these, and one of these, and I don't know, maybe I'll like them all. And then as you get older, you you kind of learn, no, star fruit's nasty, dragon fruit <laughs> tastes weird, I'll stick with the pomegranate, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and especially, like, I don't know how, like, it for other, you know, pe groups, but, like, there's, uh, there's a very real, like, thing for lesbians where they're, like, you know they're raised to believe like oh you'll find like you know like a nice mm -hmm. guy and so they like I for a long time they think so they're much. attracted to dudes and it's uh. like it's it's a really weird thing but like you legitimately think you're attracted to them and then you're like oh wait no i hate i don't like that oh i don't like that oh i oh wait no and then like I eventually you, it, you figure it out but like mm -hmm. you know like hearing what other people like can also influence what you like and stuff too so it's, yeah mm -hmm. yeah or at yeah. the very least you're like oh maybe i should try that yeah yeah, exactly. And it definitely, you shouldn't have to feel that way. Like, you shouldn't have to hide who you are and what you're attracted to just because it's not the social norm. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Yeah, shouldn't have to, but yeah. work in progress. Welcome to society. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Progress is coming, but it's a little slow in getting there. Yeah, just a little bit. I also forgot to mention that the following questions are coming from Holly, who was a guest on episode three. Okay including that previous question so you're good how yeah, do you feel kidding. about sex scenes in shows and movies how do i feel about them it, mm -hmm. depends. it, it depends i mean like for example like something like game of thrones has a lot of um, yeah non-consensual stuff and i yeah. and a lot I can't of unnecessary watch it. I stuff can't, no i you know. i have a big problem with that too i know there's a lot of aces that are like they would they would love it if all sex scenes in shows and movies were abolished they just want none of them <laughs> yeah Whereas... like if it if there's something that like ties it to the plot in some way then like yes. i don't mind but like if it's just oh we can have the hot girl take off her shirt like if that's yeah. the whole point like, like why why do like that scene, <laughs> now i have to feel people, weird in front that... of you know anyone i'm watching with yes yeah. Right. Yeah. i know that i i personally fall on like the sex positive asexual spectrum because i'm kind of mm -hmm. like sure if you want it you do you i'm gonna be over here. Yeah, same here my thing with sex scenes in shows and in movies is if it makes sense and it's done well 
I don't mind it. Like, you know, if you have, exactly. uh, my favorite example is the the movie with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. There's that scene where they like, they're actively trying to kill each other. They're shooting up their house and it's crazy. <laughs> and then when they finally get into like a hand to hand fist fight in the kitchen and they, he kind of gets her pinned down where he's got her like dead to rights. She's telling him, go ahead, fucking take me out. And he's like, no, I can't do it. And they end up like making out and get just, throwing each other around the kitchen and getting on but it makes sense for that to happen they've been married for all this time and they just discovered this crazy thing about one another that they're both professional hitmen they're you know respective leaders are like well you got to take the other one out because we can't have this and you know it makes sense it dr yeah. it drives me crazy the most in like slasher flicks like the friday the 13th series where it's literally just yeah. have a bunch of horny hot teenagers who are getting it on despite the fact that their friends are literally dropping like flies around them just so that we can have <laughs> sex and violence because yeah, those two yeah, things any, sell. Anything and it's for like, a rating, I guess. Really? Yeah. Really? It's, it's okay, a stereotype, but it's, it's kind then. of funny. It okay. is. It can be. Like, there are definitely some of the Friday the 13th movies that, like, kind of make fun of that <laughs> and they don't take mm -hmm. it super seriously. But then there are some of the entries where it's just like. I mean, those movies <sighs> in terms of like, they just, they go all across the board with their. They, just, yeah, they go, they, they're wild. wild. <laughs> all right, next question. What did you first think asexuality was before becoming more educated? I thought that it meant that you wanted to live life completely alone, period. <laughs> oh. I thankfully didn't like find out about it and then have to figure it out like I found out about it while I was educating myself so I, I didn't know that doesn't really apply to me I guess okay I I thought it was a scientific term for entities that don't need a partner to reproduce I did not realize until I was in my 30s that it was a sexual orientation as well which is why I I classify mm -hmm. myself as a late blooming asexual uh, yes late bloomers <laughs> all across the LGBTQ plus community. Right. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> what questions or misunderstandings do you think most allos have about asexuals? I mean, I don't, I, I mean, there's all like the really ignorant questions, like mm -hmm. I, I, you would know them. I don't, I don't know. Oh yeah, the, um, just, you just haven't found the right person. My yeah. personal oh, that's favorite. An, oh, yeah, that's, I feel like every community has that yeah. question though, for some oh, reason. Yeah. Straight oh, dudes yeah. are like, you, you and I. You like, just what? haven't found no. the right dude. And for yeah. gay guys, it's like, you just haven't found the right woman. My Which personal is... favorite was the random Karen who didn't even know me telling me that I would never have a fulfilling life without a partner or children. Huh. See, I've seen like some people who like twist it around and say, you know, do you like llamas? No. Well, you just haven't found the right llama yet. Like, and like, that's right. not yes. obviously like the best argument, but like it, Kind of. My, kind my of favorite is. was somebody put up on the uh, asexuality Reddit about a thing of, have you ever hugged a cactus? Well, how do you know you don't like hugging cactuses? Why don't you go right. hug a fucking cactus? <laughs> that that has to be the most ignorant question. What do you mean you don't like it? Have you tried it? That like that is yeah. first of all none of your business, and second yeah, exactly. of all, it's still none so of your business. So what if I have? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No matter how you look at this picture, it's none of your business. Yeah. All right, next question. Have you ever been sexually attracted to someone you wouldn't date or romantically attracted to someone, but the sexual attraction slash chemistry wasn't there? In other words, how often does the split attraction model apply to individual attraction for allos, if not the entire split orientation? Long question. I mean, like, I, I don't know, occasionally, it doesn't happen that often, you mm -hmm. know, like, but it, it does happen, especially, like, when you're younger, at least for me, like, when, you know, in, like, the crushy phase, you know, when you're, you know, becoming a teenager, like, you see someone like, oh, you mm -hmm. know, you know, it'd be cute with them and stuff like that, and especially lesbians do this thing where we, like, you hauling, but, like, specifically, you see a girl and you're like, I have our entire life planned together. We're gonna live in a cottage, we're gonna do this, you know, like, the whole thing, yes. so, yeah. I mean, we have a whole I don't thing. know, I feel like when you're younger, it happens more often. Yeah. Right. right. I don't know. I know, like, it also depends on kind of, like, what you tend to find yourself attracted to. Like, oh, there was the one, like, drag queen that was on Drag Race who was, like, very open and honest about, you know, oh, I'm not dating anyone at the moment because I have a tendency to want to, like, I'm attracted to guys who are, like, gangbangers, but they don't treat me very nicely. And oh my God. I'm, I'm very tired of being <laughs> treated poorly, so... 
you know, I'm trying to work out how to find right. a relationship, somebody who will actually be there for me and treat me the way I want to be treated, but also, also kind of hard. fits that, that aesthetic attraction of looking like a hard boy. <laughs> it's hard if you are romantically attracted to someone that you're not sexually attracted to. Because if that person treats you well and treats you how you want someone who you're sexually attracted to to treat you, it is very hard to walk away from that. And you will yeah. find yourself trying to force sexual attraction. Like, not on, like, with them, but on with yourself and being like, no, you are attracted to that person. And it's not just because they hug me and they kiss me and they hold me and they tell me how cute I am. Like, it's because I really do like them and which might not actually be the case. You want the attention yeah. and the affection. It's it's hard to, if you have only one, it's hard to force the other one on like a yeah, person that, that, mentally. That kind right. of the story of my life for a long mm-hmm. time. So, um, hookup culture kind of deals with the only sexual attraction and no romantic. Mm-hmm. Yes. Alright, so there's that example. It's kind of hard to find it the other way around sometimes. Yeah, it really is. At some point, I actually have a question for the aces myself. Okay, what you got? Okay, so in like the queer community, there's become this thing where like sp- certain musicians represent groups of people. Like for example, you can like you can ask someone, "Hey, do you listen to Girl in Red?" and that because she's a, a famous lesbian musician, and so that implies like, "Are you a lesbian?" Yeah. And there's other musicians yeah. like um, Mother Mother is known amongst the non-binaries. Oh, wow! Harry I Styles. I've heard of them. I have to look them yeah. up. Um, Harry Styles is known amongst the, the bisexuals. You know, like and Beyonce is like yeah. a flamboyant gay. You know, things like that. Yeah. Is there one for ace that you can for like ace people that you can think of? Like a musician yeah, that I, like uh, is heavily associated or at least ooh, you know, something not like that. that I'm aware of. So I'm just curious. If, if there is, I haven't heard of them. Yeah, I haven't heard of them. I, Song, I, to songs my knowledge, musician. we don't have a, a a fully like obviously like out asexual music artist that seems to be right. well known. Like I haven't heard of that. I'd love it if there were. Yeah, especially if their music falls into like the categories that I'm really into, because that would be fucking epic to find like a gothy, asexual musician. Hell yes, yeah. I'd eat that up all day, every day. So like, I guess listeners, if you know one, send it in. <laughs> yeah, please do, because yeah, I'm true. always yes. on the hunt for new yeah, music. Please do. The only ones I can think of, ones for Aro, ones for Ace specifically, Aro. Crush Culture by Conan Gray is what I've heard. Mm. Um, and for Aces, Mood by 24K Golden featuring I and Dior. Okay. I'm probably butchering names, but... Yeah, you're good. Yeah. I Neither of those are really You'll have up to type like them my out for taste. us later and I'll go look for them. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I will. Neither of those are up my music taste. I just kind of saw them floating around and it's like, it kind of works, kind of doesn't. So how old were you when you first experienced sexual or romantic attraction crushes? In your opinion, was it early or late? And that question came from Bird, who's... Yes. Who's a lovely girl. Yes. I, like for myself it was romantic crushes like pretty early like around like mm-hmm. six or something like I got like I, I you know like since I was like six I got those all the time in terms of sexual ones oh. though like only like once I started like puberty like it, it wasn't once puberty hit and and that area of your brain started lighting up then it was like oh wait <laughs> yeah I guess it was it was always romantic crushes for me and uh-huh. It, you know it's been mostly that that's like usually what i get i don't know like i especially like if depending on my relationship with the person if i get like a sexual like crush on the person or like i'm sexually attracted i might feel a little guilty and like mm. I, especially in like lesbian like culture there's this there's this fear of being a creep and yeah. part of that is because of stereotypes and what we're told and you know whole things about oh women you know women you know lesbians in women's west restrooms and things like that right so yeah. to an extent you know I think I kind of maybe I par- I partially block out a, a sexual crush like that if I have one. Right. I don't know, but usually I can for understand me, that. I think I was like normal or maybe early in the romantic section. But other than that, I don't think I'm ever. Wait, normal. how old were you when you first experienced sexual attraction? <sighs> 13, 14, about that. I don't know. That sounds yeah. That sounds about, yeah. about the same for, for me, what yeah. I've what I've heard in my research. Yeah, I don't know. My mother would have been classified as late because she didn't really have that until she was like 16 or 17. So that would be classified as late. <laughs> yeah. Heard of like as early as eight or nine. So it's like, yeah. It's some people, I, I had a I had a friend growing Ooh. up who was like that. And I was just like, ooh, child. No, and that there, are, not it. there are people that you grow up with that now are much more sexually mm-hmm. 
active and you're like, eh, that mm-hmm. makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. I mean, sense. it depends on what they were exposed to, right? Like, if, exactly. if they learned about stuff really early, they, you know, yeah. I was just sitting here thinking about it, and I was definitely very early on into the romantic. I wanted a boyfriend because I wanted to hold hands with someone. That's Aww. one of my things. Oh, I love cute. to hold hands. So, Wholesome. like, I even in school and stuff, my little boyfriends, it was like, no, you can't hug me, but we can hold hands. Okay? Okay. Aww. <laughs> Save room for the Lord. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, leave room when dancing. Maintain distance when dancing. Leave room for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that sentence has always amused me way too much. Yeah. And then probably my first sexual, I was like, oh, well, I don't understand these feelings. I was definitely 13. And I remember it. It was very yeah. vivid. Ooh. It's like, oh, wait, what, what is this? I will share that story, actually, because it's a, it's hilarious. We were watching football. <laughs> uh-huh. And I had a crush on Clay Matthews. And um, he was doing his flexing thing. And all of a sudden, I got hot and sweaty. And I literally went outside because I didn't, and I didn't understand Aww. what was happening. Oh, wow. And I was like flushed. And my mom's sense. like, it's like, yeah, you you're good? 13. <laughs> welcome to puberty. <laughs> Cause I'm like, mom, what's going on? Oh I don't know gosh. what's wrong with me. Poor thing. <laughs> At least she good was on, nice Good on it. Sam though. Like, she was just kind of like, no, you're good. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. You're going to be all right, kid. Yeah, at least she didn't like demonize it or something. Like, something <laughs> no, her her mom and no, my mom that's... are both very very similar. They've always gotten on pretty well when they've spoken. Like that, that's they're good. they're it's very just... very yeah, similar yeah. people in a way, and yeah, it's not yeah, like, surprising like... to me that even though she and I did not grow up together, that we're basically the same person on opposite sides of the country. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, especially if you're in a religious context, though, like for some people, they like if they are, you know, like the whole like, oh, you have a sexual attraction. Don't, you know, just yeah, don't it's a demon. That, you don't know, have so sex so. or you'll die. <laughs> yeah. Like that's sin. What do you know? Just, you know, don't. You sin. can't be like, sinful. It, yeah, like, it's so... that easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm very sinful no, that I God. wasn't in a religious household and had a reaction like that because yeah. it was very now looking back on it, it was very obvious as to what was going on. I just didn't know yeah. what was going on. Yeah, because you were right. 13 and you had no contact, no experience. <laughs> I was just a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, last three questions are my questions, so I'm going to ask them. Go for it. Do you think society is overly focused on sex? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I mean, okay. like we were saying, it's in all of the movies, it's in all of the songs. You can't scroll through your Instagram feed without seeing somebody's booty cheeks. You can't, like, how many people <laughs> have you seen oh, advertising yeah, their OnlyFans? Oh my god, yeah, the OnlyFans plague it's over, that started it's up. It's over-sexualized. Everything yeah, is. No. Everything okay. is. 100%. Yeah. Okay. I mean, for God's sakes, for a while, I worked as a cam girl. Oh. And, like, I didn't do anything. Like, I wasn't, like, putting it out there on camera. My my whole shtick was literally, I just sat there and talked about nerdy stuff in, like, <laughs> like a low-cut top. <laughs> and I would do, like, amateur burlesque if you, like, That's wanted a private thing. show. And that was literally all I did, but... Oh, wow. There is still definitely like a stigma of, oh, you were, you, you're a, a cam girl, huh? Yeah, yeah, sex <laughs> because workers. They're, yeah, they're kind yeah, of better. viewed as like, regardless of what you might be doing on there, it's, right. th- you tell somebody that and their mind immediately goes to, you have an entire shelf of sex toys that you're <laughs> doing all kinds of crazy stuff with for money. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, it's a whole I mean, thing. How, Most how common us, is it? Is an ace cam girl though, like. <laughs> right. it's, it's ironic. Yeah. To be fair, like, at the time I did not realize that, like, I was in a relationship oh, okay. with somebody, and oh. yeah, I spent a I spent a very long, long, long portion of my life thinking that I was just wired wrong, mm. uh-huh. and that there was something wrong with me that I didn't. Because my thing has never been I've never been like sex repulsed or anything. It's always been kind of like, yeah, this is nice, but so is reading a book. Mm. you know okay so i always just assumed that was something wrong with me (laughs) Mm. okay um next question what is your opinion on sex jokes why are people compelled to make them i mean it depends on like who makes them and like the kind of joke like if it's like some straight dude making a bunch of like lesbian sex jokes 
It's gross. Or it's they're, they're not yeah, funny. It's disgusting. Oh, you know? no. No, like, not. If it's like Or very misogynistic jokes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Of a like, sexual I don't nature. Know, like, it's like... They can be funny. I think they have to be, like, creative. They can't just be like, you know, like, like haha, 69 or something like that. Like, it has I to be... I hate that. Really... <laughs> that grinds my gears It has so to be, badly. like, something at least a little creative, at least for me. I think it's definitely... It depends who's saying it, and... <laughs> It shouldn't be a joke that you like, haha, share with your friends. You want to share a sexual joke with your partner? That's one thing. Mm. Oh, that's for me, a new perspective. Just yeah. because it's not like you shouldn't joke about anybody's sexuality, especially your own. And that's kind of yeah. where it starts going. Mm, right. If that's just my personal mm. opinion on them, I guess. Right. Yeah, I think it definitely depends if you're making jokes about groups you're not a part of. I mean, but that applies to yeah. things other than just sex jokes, though. So, like. Yes, right. absolutely. Yeah. All right, and the last question. Is there a difference between being sexually attracted to someone and being turned on by someone? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I right, have... and what is that difference? Yeah, we, 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 just, yeah, we know we talked about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's also in that context, because I know like a lot of people who are survivors of like sexual assault, mm -hmm. because of the way our bodies are wired, even if you don't want what's going on, if they're hitting the right buttons and doing the right things, the body right. reacts. The body yeah. is wired to react a specific way to specific things. And if those specific things are done, the machinery gets kicked on and everything does what it, so it's basically like you're being betrayed by your own body because your yeah. body is reacting in a positive way and your mind is not. And I know a lot, a lot of sexual assault survivors have a huge like guilt complex from that. So yeah, there's very definitely a huge difference between being sexually attracted to someone and being turned on by someone because somebody could turn on your body with while your mind and everything else in you is going absolutely not yeah, absolutely and like, but also like what we said in the chat earlier it's like being sexually attracted to someone is more of like a casual like oh they're hot they're attractive where like yeah. being turned yeah. on is like right now i am currently attracted to this person like i you know, am currently looking to do the thing yes like, uh, <laughs> looking to send going. that kind of thing yeah. Somebody uh, get the cheese right. dip. <laughs> hey, um, that's it. We're done. That went on for a lot longer than I expected it to. So it'll be fair. We Sorry, had a lot Dana. of questions to go over. Oh yeah, and we went on a few tangents. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry yeah. about tangents that. Tangents are healthy. Yeah. <laughs> um. Sorry, so thank you for listening. If you would like to see behind the scenes stuff, follow us on Instagram at Nights of Nope. Um, we also have a Reddit account, u slash Nights of Nope. And you can also email us at a casual exchange. We'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> Bye. 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 A casual exchange was created by the Knights of Nope. Hosted by Allie. Produced and edited by Dana. All music used can be found in the description.